I met Chelsea during a particularly dark period of her life. She was living with her two young daughters, Chloe, who was just nine months old, and Tara, who was two. Their home was a small, rundown house, barely enough to shelter them. She struggled to make ends meet, juggling between paying bills and feeding her children. Despite her hardships, there was a resilience in her eyes that couldn't be overlooked. I remember the first time I saw her. It was a rainy Tuesday afternoon. I had called a cleaning agency to send someone over, and when I opened the door, there she stood. She was petite, with auburn hair pulled back into a messy bun and tired eyes that spoke volumes. Her clothes were modest and worn, but she carried herself with a quiet dignity. Good afternoon, she said softly, her voice trembling slightly. I'm Chelsea. The agency sent me. I nodded, trying to hide my immediate fascination. Please, come in. As she walked past me, I couldn't help but notice how her eyes scanned the room, not with envy, but with a kind of wistful acceptance. It was clear that life had not been kind to her. She worked diligently, moving from room to room with a determined grace. I watched her, captivated by the way she seemed to pour her heart into every task. After a while, I decided to break the silence. Would you like something to drink? Coffee? Tea? I asked, hoping to start a conversation. She looked up, surprised, and then nodded. Tea would be nice. Thank you. I made us both a cup, and we sat at the kitchen table. She seemed hesitant, unsure of how much to share with a stranger, but I could see the weight of her burdens in her eyes. Are you married? Do you have children? I asked. No, I'm not married, but I have two beautiful daughters. It's tough, isn't it? I began gently, raising two kids on your own. She sighed and nodded. It is, but I have to keep going for them. They're all I have. Do you have any family nearby? I asked, genuinely curious. She shook her head. No, it's just us. My parents passed away a few years ago, and I haven't kept in touch with any other relatives. There was a pause, and I could see she was contemplating whether or not to continue. Finally, she spoke, her voice barely above a whisper. Sometimes, I don't know how we'll make it through the next day. But when I look at Chloe and Tara, I know I have to find a way. Her words struck a chord with me. Here was a woman who, despite her struggles, found the strength to keep going for the sake of her children. I felt an inexplicable connection to her, a need to be part of her world. You know, I said, trying to lighten the mood. You have a quiet strength about you. It's admirable. She blushed and looked down at her tea. Thank you, she murmured. That means a lot. As the afternoon turned into evening, Chelsea finished her work and prepared to leave. I walked her to the door, not wanting our conversation to end. Will you be coming back next week? I asked, trying to keep my tone casual. She nodded. Yes, if that's all right with you. More than all right, I replied with a smile. I look forward to it. As she walked away, I watched her disappear into the rain, feeling a strange mix of emotions. There was something about Chelsea that had touched me deeply. Despite my wealth and comfortable lifestyle, I felt a connection to her struggles, her strength, and her unwavering love for her children. Little did I know, that rainy Tuesday afternoon would mark the beginning of a journey that would change both our lives forever. After our wedding, I moved Chelsea and her daughters into my house. It was a grand place, a sprawling estate with large windows that overlooked manicured gardens and a pool. The house stood in stark contrast to the tiny, run-down home they had left behind. The girls' eyes widened in awe as they stepped into their new home, their faces lighting up with wonder. However, it wasn't easy for me to accept another man's children. Despite my deep love for Chelsea, the thought gnawed at me. Every time I saw Tara and Chloe, I was reminded that they weren't mine. I often found myself questioning why God hadn't brought Chelsea into my life sooner, why those children weren't ours. One evening, as we sat in the living room, Chelsea sensed my unease. She reached over and placed her hand on mine. Are you all right, Gabriel? She asked softly, 
her eyes searching mine. I sighed, not wanting to burden her, but knowing I needed to be honest. It's just, it's hard sometimes, Chelsea. I love you so much, but I can't help but feel. I don't know, like an outsider. She squeezed my hand. I understand, but give it time. The girls love you already. Tara calls you daddy, you know. That did warm my heart. Tara had taken to calling me daddy almost immediately. The first time she said it, I felt a mix of joy and unease. It was a strange feeling, one I struggled to reconcile. Later that night, I found myself in the nursery, watching Chloe sleep. Her tiny chest rose and fell with each breath, and she looked so peaceful, so innocent. As I stood there, Tara appeared in the doorway, rubbing her eyes. Daddy, she whispered. I turned, kneeling to her level. Yes, sweetheart. Can you tuck me in? She asked, holding out her small hand. My heart melted. Of course, Tara. As I tucked her into bed, she looked up at me with big, trusting eyes. Do you love mommy? She asked. I smiled, brushing a strand of hair from her forehead. Very much. Do you love me and Chloe too? Her voice was small, almost fearful. I felt a lump in my throat. Yes, Tara. I love you and Chloe very much. She smiled and snuggled into her pillow. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Tara, I whispered, turning off the light. As I closed the door, I realized that despite my initial doubts and the complexities of our situation, my love for Chelsea and her daughters was growing stronger each day. Tara and Chloe were becoming a part of me, a part of my life that I couldn't imagine being without. Adjusting to this new life wasn't easy, but every moment with them made the struggle worthwhile. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and painted the sky in hues of orange and pink, curiosity got the better of me. We were sitting in the living room. Chelsea nestled beside me on the couch, her head resting on my shoulder. The girls were asleep, and the house was quiet. I turned to her, unable to shake the question that had been gnawing at me. Chelsea, can I ask you something? She looked up, her eyes meeting mine. Of course, Gabriel. What is it? I hesitated, unsure how to phrase it without causing her pain. How did you end up with Tara and Chloe, without ever being married? Her face turned pale, and she drew back slightly, as if the question had physically hurt her. She took a deep breath, her eyes glistening with unch tears. My boyfriend. He died in a car accident before we could marry, she whispered, her voice barely audible. I reached out, taking her hand in mine. I'm so sorry, Chelsea. I didn't mean to bring up painful memories. She shook her head, squeezing my hand. It's okay. It's just, it's hard to remember. Please, can we not talk about it anymore? I nodded, feeling a pang of guilt for having brought it up. Of course. I'm sorry. Despite the shadows of her past, Chelsea was a loving wife. She poured her heart into our home, taking care of me and the children with a tenderness that was both beautiful and heart-wrenching. Each day, I found myself growing more attached to Tara and Chloe, slowly accepting them as my own. One Sunday afternoon, we were in the garden. Tara was playing with a ball, her laughter ringing through the air, while Chloe toddled around, exploring the world with wide-eyed wonder. Daddy, look. Tara called out, holding up a flower she had picked. I smiled, walking over to her. That's beautiful, Tara. You have a good eye for flowers. She beamed, her eyes sparkling with joy. Can we put it in a vase? Absolutely, I replied, taking her hand and leading her back to the house. Chelsea was in the kitchen, preparing lunch. She looked up as we entered, her face lighting up with a smile. What do we have here? Tara found a lovely flower. I said, handing it to her. She wants to put it in a vase. Chelsea took the flower, her eyes softening as she looked at Tara. It's beautiful, sweetie. Just like you. Tara giggled, and I felt a warmth spread through me. These moments, simple yet profound, were slowly weaving us into a real family. That evening, after the girls were in bed, 
Chelsea, and I sat on the porch, enjoying the quiet. She leaned her head on my shoulder, and I wrapped my arm around her, pulling her close. Thank you, Gabriel, she murmured, for everything. I kissed the top of her head, feeling a deep sense of contentment. I love you, Chelsea, and I love Tara and Chloe. We're a family now. She smiled, her eyes shining with tears of happiness. Yes, we are, and I couldn't ask for a better one. As we sat there, wrapped in each other's arms, I realized that despite the pain and loss of the past, we had found something beautiful. We had found each other, and together, we were building a future filled with love and hope. As time passed, Chelsea started taking classes and staying out late more frequently. She said God had sent me to her so she could pursue her dreams, study foreign languages, practice yoga, and even indulge in massages. I allowed her these liberties, understanding how hard her life had been. I wanted to surround her with love and support. One evening, Chelsea sat across from me at the dinner table, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Gabriel, I've enrolled in a language class. It's something I've always wanted to do. I smiled, reaching across to hold her hand. That's wonderful, Chelsea. I'm so proud of you. She squeezed my hand, her enthusiasm palpable. Thank you, Gabriel. You have no idea how much this means to me. I feel like I finally have a chance to do something for myself. Anything you need, just let me know. I replied. I want you to be happy. Her routine began to change. She would leave the house early in the morning, dropping Tara and Chloe off at daycare before heading to her classes. In the evenings, she often stayed out late, attending yoga sessions or getting a massage. I understood her need to unwind and support her dreams, but I couldn't help but feel a slight pang of loneliness when she wasn't around. One night, as I was tucking Tara into bed, she looked up at me with curious eyes. Daddy, why is mommy always out? I paused, choosing my words carefully. Mommy is working hard to learn new things and take care of herself. It's important for her to do that. Tara nodded, seemingly satisfied with my answer. Will she be home to say goodnight? She'll be home soon, I assured her, kissing her forehead. Good night, sweetheart. After putting Chloe to bed, I sat in the living room, waiting for Chelsea. The clock ticked steadily, and I found myself lost in thought. I understood her need for personal growth and self-care, but I missed the times when we were all together. The door opened, and Chelsea walked in, looking refreshed but tired. She smiled when she saw me. Hey, you're still up. I stood up, walking over to her. I wanted to wait for you. She wrapped her arms around me, resting her head on my chest. I'm sorry I'm out so late. I just, I feel like I'm finally doing something for myself. I held her close, feeling her warmth. I know, Chelsea. And I support you. I just miss you sometimes, that's all. She looked up at me, her eyes filled with gratitude. I miss you too, Gabriel. But I promise, this is just a phase. I need to do this for me, for us. I nodded, understanding but still feeling the ache of her absence. I get it, just don't forget, we're in this together. She smiled, standing on her tiptoes to kiss me. I won't. Thank you for being so understanding. As Chelsea's routine continued, I found myself taking on more responsibilities at home. It wasn't always easy, but every time I saw Chelsea's smile, it reminded me why I was doing this. One Saturday morning, as I was making breakfast, Chelsea came into the kitchen, her face glowing with happiness. Gabriel, guess what? I turned, curious. What is it? I aced my language exam, she exclaimed, holding up her certificate. I rushed over, lifting her in a hug. That's amazing, Chelsea. I'm so proud of you. She laughed, tears of joy in her eyes. I couldn't have done it without you. As I held her, I realized that the changes in our routine, though challenging, were necessary. Chelsea was blossoming, and in supporting her, I found a deeper sense of purpose and love. Our family was growing stronger, and I knew that whatever came our way, we would face it together. 
But something changed in Chelsea. Her outfits became more revealing, her demeanor more carefree. She often smelled of alcohol. I stayed home with the children while she was supposedly at school, but doubts began to creep into my mind. Chelsea used to dress modestly, her outfits reflecting her quiet strength. Now, her clothes were more revealing, something I found both surprising and unsettling. It wasn't just her clothes. Chelsea had become more carefree, almost reckless. She laughed louder, stayed out later, and came home with the faint smell of alcohol clinging to her. The changes were subtle at first, but they grew more pronounced over time. One night, as she walked in, I was sitting on the couch, waiting for her. She wore a tight dress that hugged her figure, and her cheeks were flushed. Whether from the cold or the alcohol, I couldn't tell. Hey, she said, kicking off her heels. Why are you still up? I stood, trying to keep my voice calm. I was waiting for you. Chelsea, where have you been? She laughed, a sound that was starting to feel foreign to me. Just out with some friends. Why? What's the big deal? The big deal, I said, struggling to maintain my composure, is that you said you were going to school, but you come home smelling like a bar. What's going on, Chelsea? Her expression shifted, a flicker of defensiveness crossing her face. I'm just trying to have some fun, Gabriel. Is that so wrong? Fun is one thing, I replied, but you're different now. You're not the same person you were. She rolled her eyes, frustration evident in her tone. People change, Gabriel. Maybe you should try it. Her words stung, and I felt a pang of doubt settle deeper in my chest. I just want to understand, Chelsea. Is there something you're not telling me? She looked away, her expression closing off. There's nothing to tell. I'm just exploring who I am. As she walked past me, heading to the bedroom, I felt a cold emptiness wash over me. The woman I had fallen in love with was slipping away, replaced by someone I hardly recognized. Days turned into weeks, and the seeds of doubt planted themselves firmly in my mind. Chelsea's late nights became more frequent, and her excuses more flimsy. I stayed home with Tara and Chloe, reading them bedtime stories, and trying to keep our routines normal, but the cracks in our family were growing wider. But as I said the words, I knew they were hollow. Chelsea's changes were more than just business or stress. Something deeper was at play, and it was tearing our family apart. I decided I needed to know the truth. The next time Chelsea went out, I followed her. I watched as she entered a bar, laughing with people I didn't recognize, her demeanor so carefree it hurt. I saw her take a drink from a man, their interaction too familiar for comfort. I drove home, my mind racing with questions and doubts. That night, as I lay in bed, listening to the sound of her slipping in beside me, I knew things couldn't go on like this. The woman I loved was hiding something, and I needed to find out what it was before it destroyed us completely. One day, driven by suspicion and a desperate need for answers, I decided to visit Chelsea's old neighborhood. I had to know more about her past to understand the changes that had been tearing our family apart. As I drove through the streets she once called home, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was about to uncover something life-changing. I parked near a row of worn-down houses and made my way to one that looked slightly better maintained than the others. An elderly man was sitting on the porch, rocking slowly in his chair. He looked up as I approached his eyes sharp despite his age. Good afternoon, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. My name is Gabriel. I'm looking for some information about Chelsea. She used to live around here. The old man, who introduced himself as Grandpa, chuckled. Chelsea, you say? Oh, I remember her well. What do you want to know? I hesitated, unsure how to phrase my question without sounding accusatory. I've heard some things about her past. I need to know if they're true. Grandpa leaned forward, his expression turning serious. Son, Chelsea had a notorious reputation around here. She worked as a prostitute, had those kids of hers from some of her clients, often being unprotected and drunk. The words hit me like a punch to the gut. How do you know all this? 
I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. He shrugged. The whole neighborhood knew. It was right in front of our eyes. We'd see her stumbling home or fighting with one of her johns. It was no secret. I felt a cold sweat break out on my forehead. But she told me she had a boyfriend who died in a car accident. Grandpa let out a dry laugh. That's the story she spun, huh? Nah, she had no steady boyfriend. Just a string of men who paid for her time. Then she had those babies, settled down a bit, and caught herself a rich man. Don't envy the fool who took her, though. I stood there, stunned, trying to process what I was hearing. Are you sure? There's no mistake. He looked at me with pity. I'm sure, son. Seen it all with my own eyes. Chelsea wasn't exactly discreet. I thanked him and walked back to my car in a daze. The drive home felt like a blur, my mind racing with a torrent of thoughts and emotions. I felt betrayed, confused, and deeply hurt. The woman I loved, the mother of the children I had come to adore, had lied to me about everything. When I got home, the house was quiet. Chelsea was out, and the girls were playing in their room. I sat down on the couch, trying to figure out what to do next. Confronting Chelsea with this information felt both inevitable and terrifying. That evening, when Chelsea finally returned, I was waiting for her. She walked in, her carefree demeanor now a painful reminder of the truth I had uncovered. Gabriel? She said, noticing my expression. What's wrong? I took a deep breath, my voice trembling. I went to your old neighborhood today. Her face went pale. Why would you do that? I needed answers, Chelsea. And I got them. Grandpa told me everything. She stood there, frozen, as the truth sank in. Tears welled up in her eyes, and she took a step towards me. Gabriel, I can explain. Explain what? I snapped, unable to contain my anger. That you lied to me that you hid your past from me. She broke down, sobbing. I was scared. I didn't think you'd love me if you knew the truth. I felt a mix of anger and sorrow. Chelsea, I loved you for who I thought you were, but now, I don't know what to believe. She fell to her knees, clutching my hand. Please, Gabriel. I made mistakes, but I love you. I love our family. Don't let my past destroy what we have. I looked down at her, my heart aching. I need time to think, Chelsea. I need to figure out what this means for us. As she cried, I walked away, needing space to process everything. The truth had been revealed, and now I had to decide what to do with it. The road ahead was uncertain, but one thing was clear. Our lives would never be the same again. I started watching the wife again. I felt like a detective in one of those gritty crime novels I used to read. For three days, everything seemed normal. She went to her classes, met up with friends for coffee, and returned home in time for dinner. I began to doubt my suspicions, wondering if perhaps I had overreacted. But on the fourth day, everything changed. Chelsea said she was going to her evening class, the one she had been so excited about. I waited until she left then followed her car at a safe distance. My heart pounded as I watched her take a different route than usual, heading towards a part of town I was unfamiliar with. She parked outside a dimly lit bar. I watched as she got out of the car, her outfit far too revealing for a simple class. She walked inside, and I waited for a few minutes before following her in. The bar was loud and crowded, filled with people who seemed to know each other too well. I spotted Chelsea at the counter, laughing with a group of strangers, a drink already in her hand. I found a dark corner to sit in, trying to blend into the background. As the minutes turned into hours, I watched her drink after drink. Her laughter grew louder, her behavior more flirtatious. My heart sank, a heavy weight settling in my chest. Then a burly trucker approached her. They exchanged a few words, and Chelsea giggled leaning into him. They left the bar together, his arm around her waist. I followed them outside, my stomach twisting in knots. I watched as they walked to his truck, parked at the edge of the lot. Chelsea looked back briefly, and for a moment, 
I thought she saw me. But she turned away, climbing into the truck without hesitation. The door slammed shut, and they drove off into the night. My mind raced with a thousand thoughts. The woman I loved was leading a double life. I felt betrayed, humiliated, and heartbroken all at once. When I got home, I found Chelsea already there, acting as if nothing had happened. She greeted me with a smile, but I couldn't hide the pain in my eyes. Gabriel, is everything all right? She asked, her voice dripping with concern. I took a deep breath, struggling to keep my voice steady. Where were you tonight, Chelsea? She hesitated, her eyes darting to the side. I told you, I had class. I shook my head, anger and sorrow mixing in my chest. No, Chelsea. I followed you. I saw you at the bar. I saw you leave with that man. Her face went pale, and for a moment, she looked like a deer caught in headlights. Then, her expression hardened. You had no right to follow me. I had every right. I shot back. You've been lying to me, Chelsea. About everything. I needed to know the truth. Tears filled her eyes, and she took a step towards me. Gabriel, please. It's not what you think. Then tell me what it is, I demanded, my voice breaking. Because right now, it looks like you've been cheating on me, living a life I know nothing about. The next morning, I woke up with a heavy heart and a clear mind. The decision was already made. I couldn't continue living a lie, no matter how much it hurt. I got dressed and headed to the courthouse, the paperwork for divorce weighing heavily in my hand. When I returned home, Chelsea was waiting for me, her eyes red and swollen from crying. She must have sensed what I had done because she ran to me the moment I walked through the door. Gabriel, please, she sobbed, clutching my arm. Don't do this. I promise I'll never do it again. I'll change. I gently pried her fingers from my arm, trying to stay strong. Chelsea, it's too late. I can't trust you anymore. We can't build a life on lies. She fell to her knees, her tears soaking the carpet. I know I made mistakes, but we can work through this. For the girls, for us. I looked away, the pain in her voice cutting deep. I wish it were that simple, Chelsea. But I've seen too much. I felt too much betrayal. I can't live like this. She stood up, her face twisted with desperation. What about Tara and Chloe? They need you, Gabriel. They love you. My resolve wavered for a moment as I thought of the girls, but I knew this was the right thing to do. They need stability, Chelsea. They need a home that isn't built on secrets. I'll always care for them. But this, this isn't working. Chelsea's shoulders sagged in defeat. She knew there was no changing my mind. What happens now? She whispered, her voice barely audible. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my emotions in check. You'll take the girls for now. We'll figure out the details later. But for now, I need some space. She nodded slowly, tears still streaming down her face. I understand. I'll pack our things. As she walked away, I felt a strange mix of relief and sorrow. The burden of her lies was lifting, but the weight of our broken dreams pressed down on me. I watched as Chelsea packed their bags, her movements slow and deliberate, as if each item she placed in the suitcase was another piece of our shattered life. Tara and Chloe sensed the tension, their young faces filled with confusion. Tara clung to Chelsea's leg, while Chloe watched me with wide, innocent eyes. Daddy, why are we leaving? Tara asked, her voice trembling. I knelt down, forcing a smile. Mommy and Daddy need some time apart, sweetheart. But I'll always be here for you, I promise. Chelsea led the girls to the door, her face a mask of sadness. Goodbye, Gabriel, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. Goodbye, Chelsea, I replied, my voice cracking. Take care of them. As the door closed behind them, the silence of the house was deafening. I sat down on the couch, the reality of my decision crashing over me. The dream I had once held so dear was gone, replaced by an uncertain future. But despite the pain, I knew it was the right choice. 
I couldn't continue living in a web of lies and deceit. It was time to start anew, to find a path that was built on honesty and trust. And so, with a heavy heart and a weary soul, I began the long journey of healing and rebuilding my life, one step at a time. One day, months after the divorce, I was sitting in the living room, trying to find solace in a book, when I heard a hesitant knock on the door. I opened it to find Chelsea standing there, her eyes filled with a mix of desperation and hope. She looked worn, as if life had taken its toll on her. Gabriel, she began, her voice trembling. Can the girl stay with you for a while? Surprised, I glanced down and, and saw Tara and Chloe by her side, their clothes disheveled and faces tired. Of course, Chelsea. Come in. She ushered the girls inside, and they ran to me, wrapping their arms around my legs. I looked back at Chelsea, who stood in the doorway, her eyes brimming with tears. Thank you, she whispered. I just... I need some time to get myself together. I nodded, feeling a mix of concern and sadness. Take care of yourself, Ch Chelsea. We'll be here. She gave me a weak smile and turned to leave. Her shoulders slumped as if carrying an invisible weight. I closed the door and turned to the girls, forcing a smile. Who's hungry? As they ate, I couldn't help but notice how hungry they were, as if they hadn't had a proper meal in days. After dinner, we played some games, read a bedtime story, and I tucked them into bed, kissing their foreheads as they drifted off to sleep. Later that evening, as I sat in the quiet house, a heavy knock echoed through the hallway. I opened the door to find a police officer standing there, his expression solemn. Mr. Gabriel, he asked, his voice grave. Yes, that's me, I replied, a knot forming in my stomach. I'm sorry to inform you, but your ex-wife, Chelsea, was found dead earlier this evening. It appears to be an overdose. Your number and address were in her phone. The words hit me like a punch to the gut. I stood there, unable to speak, my mind racing with a torrent of emotions. Are you sure? I finally managed to ask, my voice barely above a whisper. The officer nodded. I'm afraid so, sir. Is there someone you can call? Someone who can be here with you? I shook my head, trying to process the news. No, I'll be fine. Thank you for letting me know. He gave me a sympathetic nod. If you need anything, don't hesitate to call us. I'm very sorry for your loss. I closed the door and leaned against it, feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders. Chelsea was gone. And now, Tara and Chloe were left without a mother. I walked to their room, standing in the doorway, and watching them sleep. They looked so peaceful, so innocent, unaware of the tragedy that had just struck their lives. I felt a tear slip down my cheek as I thought about how I would tell them, how I would help them navigate this loss. The next morning, as the sun rose, I sat down with Tara and Chloe at the breakfast table. They looked at me with wide, curious eyes, sensing that something was wrong. Daddy. Where's mommy? Tara asked, her voice small. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my voice. Girls, I have something very sad to tell you. Mommy. Mommy has gone to heaven. She won't be coming back. Tara's eyes filled with tears, and she clung to me, sobbing. Chloe looked confused, not fully understanding but sensing the gravity of the situation. Why, Daddy? Tara cried. Why did she have to go? I held them close, my heart breaking for their pain. I don't know, sweetheart. Sometimes things happen that we can't explain. But I'm here, and I'll always take care of you. We'll get through this together. As they cried in my arms, I vowed to be the best father I could be for them. Chelsea's final goodbye had left a void in our lives, but I would do everything in my power to fill it with love, care, and stability. We would find a way to move forward one day at a time. Alone with the children, I realized how wrong I had been about my love and life. As the days turned into weeks and then years, I watched Tara and Chloe grow, their innocence a reminder of the fragile nature of life. They barely remembered their mother, and when they asked about her, I told them she had died in a car accident. 
It was a lie, but I wanted to preserve some dignity for her in their eyes. Daddy, what was Moni like? Tara asked one evening, her big eyes filled with curiosity. I smiled gently, pulling her close. She was a wonderful person, Tara. She loved you and Chloe very much. She had a kind heart and a beautiful smile. Chloe, who was listening intently, nodded. I wish I could remember her. I know, sweetheart, I said, kissing the top of her head. But you have me, and I'll always be here for you. Raising Tara and Chloe on my own was challenging, but it also brought me a new sense of purpose. I dedicated myself to being the best father I could be, guiding them through their childhood and teenage years. I watched with pride as they grew into remarkable young women. Years later, on a warm summer evening, we sat on the porch, reminiscing about the past. Tara was now in college, studying to become a teacher, and Chloe was finishing high school with dreams of becoming a doctor. Dad, do you remember that time we got lost on our camping trip? Chloe laughed, her eyes sparkling with the memory. I chuckled, nodding. How could I forget? We ended up hiking an extra five miles because I misread the map. Tara grinned. And then we found that beautiful lake and had the best picnic ever. It turned out to be a great adventure. I looked at my daughters, feeling a surge of pride and love. You two have grown up so much. I'm so proud of the women you've become. Tara reached over, squeezing my hand. We couldn't have done it without you, Dad. You've been our rock through everything. Chloe nodded in agreement. You gave us everything we needed, even when things were tough. We're lucky to have you. Their words touched my heart, and I felt a lump in my throat. I'm the lucky one. You both have given my life meaning and purpose. Watching you grow has been the greatest joy of my life. As the sun set, casting a golden glow over the yard, I reflected on the journey we had taken together. Life had thrown us many challenges, but we had faced them head on, emerging stronger and closer as a family. The pain of losing Chelsea and the lies I had told to protect the girls had faded over time, replaced by the love and bond we had built. Tara and Chloe were my daughters in every way that mattered, and they reminded me daily of the twists and turns life could take. Out of the deepest pain, a new purpose had emerged. I had found strength and resilience I never knew I had, and in doing so, I had given my daughters a stable and loving home. As we sat together, sharing stories and laughter, I knew that we had created something beautiful out of the chaos. We were a family, and that was all that mattered.